Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I want to talk a little bit about using asset packs, uh, libraries, and toolkits in your projects and apps, and just uh, kind of a little discussion about that. So I've seen um, arguments on both sides. There are a lot of people who really you know, use as many assets as they can, as many libraries as they can, and then there are people on the far extreme who really oppose using anything and want everything to be written in-house um, or by them. And um, both of those extremes are bad. I'd say the second is worse though, when it gets to the point of, we're not gonna use anything external, we're just gonna use the base and go from there and we're gonna build everything from scratch ourselves. Now, in some situations that may make sense, but I'd say 99% of the cases I've seen, it's really just, people making decisions on bad information and um, kind of crippling their team for no real good reason. So one example of this that I saw quite a while ago was just with a, a team at a company I used to work with before, and they're just building uh, development tools, tools for the designers and the artists. Um, and instead of using libraries and toolkits that existed to do you know, basic functionality like editing big chunks of data. Everything was written from scratch using just the base class library in C Sharp. So it's just like the .NET basics, no assets, no, um, no libraries, no UI kits, nothing like that. So what ended up happening was that that tooling was extremely slow to build I mean, you think about it, you have to implement every single piece of functionality that's already really easily available for, you know, a couple bucks. I mean, well, I guess in this case it was like a thousand bucks, but not a big deal because that was a thousand dollars versus six months or a year of a developer sitting there recreating all this little basic functionality. In the end, their tooling just kind of sucked compared to all the other stuff that didn't fall into that case. And but this isn't just about like tools, right? The same thing applies to just Unity development. Like I've got the asset store tab open here for a reason because there are a lot of assets that you can pull in that are gonna make a huge impact on your game you know, and do it quickly where the alternative is to you know, go in and recreate it. Just looking here, like things like final IK, if you wanna do IK, the inverse kinematics, basically things like you know making a character reach out, grab things, making their feet line up when they're walking and going up steps and all that kind of stuff. Final IK for 90 bucks, like seems like a damn good deal, right? That's gonna take you weeks, maybe months to get it to a good point. And you can just grab this pack, spend a day and figure it out. Um, and this just happened to be one on here. It's not some special endorsement of Final IK. Um, same with like networking stuff. You know, you could go in and write your own network layer, or you could grab one of the many, many good networking options. Bolt is right here. Made me think of that. Uh, or you want to build big terrain stuff. You know, use something like Gaia. Don't just go in there and try to build your own stuff from scratch if you don't need to. Again, there could be cases where you need something special and um, you know there isn't just a pre-built option available. In that case, sure, make your own thing. But don't make that the default. And I guess the, the worst thing that can happen is when people pull in something, they start using it, and then it causes problems, and they get into the mindset of, I'm not gonna use anything external anymore because this one thing or these two things in the past caused problems. You can definitely make you know, a bad choice and grab the wrong thing and you know, not intentionally, not at your own fault, just you grabbed an asset that's just bad and causes problems. That could happen, but don't let that cloud your judgment against um, using other good assets in the future. And then there's one other thing I kind of want to mention too, because th this, this kind of came up as a rem me remembering some old stuff, but then also I saw that uh, VRTK, which I don't know if you if you haven't seen it before, it's the Virtual Reality Toolkit. It's just a nice toolkit for building VR games. But the developer has announced just recently that he's going to kind of stop working on it full time. It sounds like he's still going to kind of put a little bit of effort into it, but it's no longer going to be like a full fledged project that has you know 100% development time on it and if you build around things like this 
um, where it's kind of the core level, it's important to make sure that if you're going to use that thing, it does everything that you need it to do, or you can go in and kind of make it do those things. So it, for people that are using a VR TK right now, they shouldn't really have a problem because it's already got support for all of the things that they need. Now, if new headsets come out that need extra support, that could become an issue, but you know, hopefully they've learned how to build in their own stuff into VRTK. And I think even in this case, like even if there were a new headset where they had to start adding support, you'd have to do it somewhere. So it's not an argument against using a toolkit like this, but it is just something to, to watch out for. Like if you're using a low level, bigger thing that's really all encompassing for your project, make sure that you um, know how to work on it and know how to extend it a little bit if you need to, just in case things like support kind of fall away. Now, of course, if you make a choice for like a game engine and then that engine goes away, you know, you're kind of screwed there, but that's not very likely to happen, at least not with any of the, the bigger engines, Unreal, Unity, or probably Amazon's, although still iffy. It's, it's still a little new for me to get too much behind that one, but I, I have good hopes for it. So anyway, I guess the, the whole point of this is just um, take advantage of the stuff that's out there. Don't just try to recreate everything from scratch. Um, you know, recreate the things that you need and then buy or import or use the things that aren't really specific to your game. You, know, you don't wanna blow a lot of time on certain low level things and not spend that time on your actual game, the fun parts, what differentiates it. And you know what is going to make people want to buy your game or play your game. You know, work on those things as much as you can, and let other people do the other stuff. So just to reiterate, just make sure that you spend your time on the important stuff. You know, use the tools, use the libraries, use everything that's available to you to make your project successful and get it done and make it fun. So if this is helpful for you, um, don't forget to hit thumbs up, share, like it, um, subscribe, and thanks for watching.